Howdy folks, Dave here at Thunder Mesa Studio where I'm working on the gruesome gulch layout and this time out we're going to build a bridge inside of Cadaver Caverns. And this is the area I want to span where the scene transitions from the River of Souls area into this final finale scene over here which is still yet to be built. Right now the track is just supported by a piece of foam. So I'm going to go ahead and take some measurements here and we'll get started on this. What I want in there is a sort of an arch bridge, like a stone arch. But since this is the Gruesome Gulch layout, it has to be a little bit spookier than that. So instead of a stone arch bridge, I want to build a bridge of skulls. And the first thing I want to do is make a pattern out of some cheapo cardboard. Nine inches by like five and a half. To clear those lower tracks, I need an opening that is at least three inches wide by four inches tall. Just make sure this fits under here. To make the bridge itself, I'm going to use some polyurethane carving foam. You may remember this from the River of Souls when I carved the, the face of doom back in there. Same exact material. And the first thing I need to do is cut a piece down to size for the bridge. Just use a hard lead pencil to trace this. I only need a piece that's about two inches thick. Unfortunately, this piece of foam is too big to fit on my bandsaw, so I'm going to have to do it by hand. Right. I think the best thing to use here is actually just going to be a back saw. Try and get this as straight as I can. I should be able to do the rest of these cuts on my bandsaw. Now I just need to do a little sanding to get a nice snug fit on this over in the seam. Let's try it on for size. Fortunately, I only need to carve the stones or the skulls on the front and underneath the arch here. I don't really need to do anything on the back because that is not going to be visible. And now I'm just going through and making a mark every scale foot so I can draw some parallel lines on here as guides. Of course, if this was just a normal stone arch bridge, the next step would be to uh, draw some um, vertical lines and stagger them for the joints between the stones. But since this is a bridge of skulls, the next step is to draw in a bunch of circles, basically overlapping like that. Bury them just a little bit in size and shape. They are individuals, after all. And on and on we go. Now with all those circles done, the idea is to go back over each one, round them off a little bit more, and add some skeletal features, some deep eye sockets, a little triangle for the nose, Basically, I'm just using uh, a track nail in my pin vise. Works pretty good for this. Also using a wooden toothpick, which works nicely for those deep eye sockets. You can just kind of push them back in there. Some of them I want to be missing, or maybe they're set back in so far you can't see them. So I can just go in and make a deeper depression. What I'm thinking of too as I carve this is the, um, you know, the catacombs 
down below Paris, where those skulls are stacked up. And this uh, polyurethane carving foam, I get a lot of questions about this stuff. You can get it on Amazon. Just look for foam carving block. It's actually a little spooky once you start adding features to these guys, how they all develop little personalities of their own. Now I'm just going along the, uh, the top of the bridge and carving in just the rounded <laughs> tops of the skulls. No faces up here. All right, now I want to do basically the same thing on the underside of the arch. Figured out a way to speed this process up a little bit. Just got a piece of uh, plastic tubing from my scrap box. Just pressing it in. took a minute, <laughs> but I think we just about got it. Now I just need to uh, clean up all this foam dust, and we'll get a coat of uh, flat black paint on this. Move on to the next step. Now I want to move on to the final painting of this. I'm starting with um, some pewter gray, which is the scenic base color for everything, and uh, gruesome gulch. I'm just going to start by dry brushing this on. And of course, the idea with dry brushing is that you, you're just hitting the, the top most texture and allowing the shadows underneath the darker tones to show through. As you can see, that already starts to give some definition. We'll go over the whole thing with the pewter gray and then see what we want to do next. I'm using kind of a small brush just, just for having, a, just to have a little bit more control. Now I want to mix in a little bit of uh, lighter gray, a little granite gray. Gotta mix those two together. Get this lighter shade. So I've got some unbleached titanium, which is a nice light tan, almost a old bone color. All right. I want to give it a feeling of age and decay. So I'm going to go over it with this uh, real thin brown, thinning it down with a lot of water. Now it takes some uh, mossy green. Have that kind of coming up from the bottom here a little bit. Maybe have some streaks coming down from the top. Now I want to use a small round brush and go in and Pick out some of the skulls here and there. Make them stand out a little bit more. I think we're ready to go install this in the scene. I've removed uh, Boot Hill, make this a little bit easier. And I'm just using some Loctite Power Grab adhesive. Just kind of slide it back in there. Now I'm set up over here with uh, everything I'm going to need to do the rock work once I get a piece cut to the general shape and size that I want it. Then I want to come back with a uh, utility knife, 
kind of gouge some pieces out. Got some more uh, vertical lines. All of the rock work inside the caverns is vertical. Kind of trying to keep it random. And you want these breaks because the break looks more natural than a cut does. Pretty good start. And the next step is we take a stiff wire brush and run it along the foam like that. All the areas that are going to show. Adding some more texture. Some strata lines to the rock. Breaking away more pieces in a natural fashion. You can get in there and kind of gouge out some areas. Oops, don't forget the tops. Those are visible. And then once I get it just the way I want it, take my heat gun and gently go over all of that. And that removes the sponginess of the foam and kind of freezes all of that texture into place just by melting it back just a little bit. You don't want to melt it too much or it'll smooth it out altogether. And now that piece is ready to install. And to glue that in, I'm going to use my uh, Loctite Power Grab all-purpose adhesive. Now I've got a piece here that's going to help blend this into the fascia. And a piece to fill in right there. Drop this piece in right here. And a little guy right here. Oh, I'm covering up a bunch of my skulls. It'll be all right. This area here, I'm going to leave this uh, empty of rock work for now because I have something planned that's going to go in there and I'm not quite ready. To finish that area off yet. I will paint it though. So while you guys weren't looking, I went ahead and painted this whole area, this whole room, uh, flat black. Basically everything from the bridge back over here. This this final scene uh, on the layout. I'm not quite ready to reveal what it's all going to be yet. Uh, I've got a pretty good idea. I think it's going to be pretty cool. I think you're going to like it. Um, and I've been meaning to paint this black for a long time, just haven't gotten around to it. So I got that done, and so now everything behind the bridge will just kind of fade away into, uh, you know, a dark, shadowy limbo back there, if you will. Now, I need to make up some sculpt mold I think, to uh, blend this bridge into the ground and into these new rock formations I just put in. So, that's what's next. Actually, I lied. Uh, the next thing I want to do is <laughs> install a blue LED for a little themed lighting. Um, this is a 5 millimeter blue LED, and I'm going to hide it down in these rocks right here so it will shine up onto the bridge of the skulls from underneath, give it some nice spooky illumination. Then, after I'm done with this, then I'll mix up some sculpt mold and blend all this together. So. Let's do this now. Use my hot wire tool to very carefully melt a hole through here so I have a place to run the wires through. Now I'll tape the ends of my wires to a bamboo skewer just temporarily. This is a good trick for running wires down through layers of foam like this. Should be able to just push this right through the hole I just made. There we go, right out the other side. Now I'll use my hot wire tool again to make a groove for these wires.
And just a little black gaffer's tape over the top to make sure those don't go anywhere. All right, now I've got that hooked up to the nine volt lighting bus. I should be able to position it just where I want it. Awesome. Let's take a look at the installation. The LED is actually inside a piece of soda straw, which helps to direct it. And then some, um, some 3M foam tape is holding it to the side of the rock, and over that is a piece of black gaffer's tape, which also helps to direct the light and hold it in place. All right, got a batch of sculpt -a mold all mixed up. Now I'm just going to go in and start working it in around the base of the bridge and around these rock formations. The reason I'm using sculpt -a mold this time and not the uh, foam putty is because I wanted something that had a little bit of texture to it. The foam putty works great, but it has absolutely no texture. It, it dries completely smooth. And then to blend that up, I like to use a wet paintbrush. Just go in like that, kind of feather it up, and blend all these pieces together. And a little bead back in here. Don't want to cover up a lot of my skull detail. I worked hard on that. I like this for uh, filling voids too. Better than the foam putty. And as usual, as it sets up, it gets easier to sculpt and work with. That part's looking pretty good. Let's, let's go over here. All right, this is uh, setting up to the point that I can't really move it around too much anymore, but I think I got it. A little bit of mission creep over here into <laughs> this column, but that's all right. I felt like it needed a little bit more work going around into the uh, River of Souls scene. And, uh, you know, full disclosure, I should have, this is what I should have done, I should have put tape down on top of the track before I started doing this, just to keep globs of sculpt mold off of it. But, you know, I'd done this so many times that I was feeling kind of cocky and I didn't do that. But that is a practice I would definitely recommend if you're doing this yourself. Put some tape down on top of the track to protect it while you're using these uh, wet, goopy materials. All right, nothing really to do uh, left to do now except to uh, let this dry thoroughly overnight. Come back tomorrow, get some paint on it. Well, okay, I am excited. Today is the day uh, I get to paint all of this and finish up this scene inside Cadaver Caverns. I've got my uh, scenic base color, which is that pewter gray. Poured some into a solo cup. They're not just for kegger parties. And got some water, a couple of paint brushes. And the first thing I want to do is take kind of a smaller brush and work in carefully here, kind of block it in here next to the bridge. Because I really don't want to go over a lot of the painting I've already done on there because I'm very satisfied with that. Now with that blocked in, I can come back with a bigger brush. This is my favorite scenery painting brush. In fact, I've been using it on the scenery since the very beginning of the Thunder Mesa layout. It's kind of my lucky brush. It's getting a little worn out now <laughs> from painting acres of rocks. But uh, this is a one inch uh, filbert synthetic brush for acrylics. I prefer artist brushes to the uh, hardware store variety for this kind of thing. A little bit finer um, 
hairs on them for getting into these nooks and crannies. Now with that gray dry, I'm just going to go over everything with a black wash. This is just uh, acrylic paint, black acrylic paint, diluted with a lot of water. And this will seep back into all of the detail, darken it up a little bit. Now I'm going to finish this off with some, just some inexpensive craft acrylics. I've got some dark blue gray and some granite gray. And I'm going to mix these together in varying quantities. I throw a little blue in there too, here and there. Uh, just to see how it goes. Just going over and hitting the tops of the texture. And as I always mention with acrylics, uh, got to remember that they go on a shade lighter than they're going to dry. Yeah, I'll throw a little blue in there. Blend it right on the rock work. Now mix in a bit more of that granite gray. Start to lighten things up a little bit. Now I've got some uh, artist acrylic light blue. You mix that in with the gray for a highlight. One thing I like to do is take some of this pure granite gray and go along the base of these formations because then it looks Makes it look almost like there's mist rising up. So they're lighter down on the bottom. You just kind of fade it up like that. All right, I think we've about got it. Now for some ballast and ground cover. Now this is some poly blend sanded grout and pewter gray. I've added some water to it to make a thick paste. And this is the same material I used on the front side of the layout to do the roads and ground cover over there. And now I've just got a fat brush here and I'm going to dab it on all down in this area just to give it some texture and interest and make it look like, you know, dirt or soil rather than painted foam. And this dries about three or four shades lighter than it's going to go on. Yeah, that is almost dry already. Now, before I ballast the track, I want to do a little bit of uh, dry brushing on the ties. Just to bring out the detail a little bit. Using some just some medium gray acrylic. Now I've got my ballast. This is some black cinders that I sifted down. This is the same ballast I used up on the front of the layout. I'm just going to put some of that in a little Dixie cup. I'm going to start way back here. The track disappears around the corner and bring it all the way to the edge of the river. So I start, I put one line of ballast down the middle of the track, down the center, then I go back and put another line um, along the sides, along the uh, edges of the ties. And then I go and just spread it out with a big soft brush and you know make sure there's no big chunks up in the webbing of the rail. And then I also want to do this section of track across the top of the bridge. Before I glue all this down, I want to add some more cinders as ground cover just like up on the front of the layout. Because I want to define sort of a pathway going right through here. Yes, there's going to be a grade crossing in Cadaver Caverns. I'm going to sprinkle on a few bigger rocks here and there. Now I'm ready to glue all of this down. First pass is going to be with some wet water in a spray bottle. This is just regular water. Uh, that's uh, got a couple of drops of liquid detergent added to it. The liquid detergent in there breaks the surface tension. And now I've got some white glue, which has been diluted three to one with water. 
and I'll just dribble it on all of this ground cover and ballast. Ooh, the lid is not on there. And when you know you've got enough white glue is when you see it start to pool up like that. Wetting down the material first also helps the glue to spread out naturally. And now once again, we wait for everything to dry. So all of this is dry now. Let it dry overnight. And now I'm coming back with some, uh, some chalks to add some subtle coloration, particularly to this spectral path through here, the path to the great beyond. And uh, down here at the base to blend it in, uh, to blend the uh, ground cover in with the rocks, got some blues, grays, and white. This is some uh, Rust-Oleum clear matte finish that I like to use on chalks like this. Now I just need to clean the paint and glue and all the other gunk off of the tops of the rails and uh, also want to look for any stray bits of ballast that might have gotten up in there and will, that will interfere with the uh, flanges on the wheels. But wait, there is something I almost forgot. And that is to detail this grade crossing with some wooden boards. And I'm using uh, some just some O-scale 1x12s. I've already stained these. Just gluing them in place with a little bit of Eileen's tacky glue. And now I can drop Boot Hill back into place. Well, okay, nothing left to do now except turn everything on and see how it all works together. That is going to wrap it up for the Bridge of Skulls here on the Gruesome Gulch layout. Of course, I still have a couple more bridges to build here inside Cadaver Caverns, and I hope you'll tune in for that on a future episode. Until then, don't forget to like, subscribe, share, hit that notification bell if you want to see more. And you can also follow Thunder Mesa over on Instagram at thunder.mesa, and find all that's new on the Thunder Mesa Studio website at thundermesa.studio. And if you really like what we're doing here at the channel and would like to show your support, you can do what these nice folks did and head on over to patreon.com slash thundermesa and show your support there. Until next time, keep moving forward, my friends, and uh, adios for now.